I had a, a piece of property I bought and uh, I had got behind on the mortgage. And the uh, uh, mortgage man called me up. He said, uh, Mr. Alexander, I um, need you to make this payment. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it Friday. He said, uh, 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 I'm not gonna be able to wait that long for it. I need you to make this payment now. Cause see, I was actually behind a couple months and I caught up with one month and that, that Friday was gonna come and I was gonna catch up and I'd be on point. And he said, uh, oh, Mr. Alexander, I helped this first payment for you. Uh, you think I'm gonna hold the second payment? I said, well, I told you I'm gonna make it Friday. He said, I'm not, not gonna be at rate. He said, uh, I tell you what, you just get ready to pack. And I said, well, I believe it's paid already. He said, what you say? I said, I believe it's paid already in Jesus' name.
Greetings and welcome to another broadcast of Grow to Go Christian Center. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to bid you grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and our Savior, our Lord and Jesus Christ. So today we're going to be teaching on the subject of a close relationship with God, something that every believer should desire to do. God knows you, but he wants you to know him. Amen. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I just come before your throne, giving you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to gather around your word. Thank you, Father, for the anointing on my life to minister and teach your word in Jesus' name. Satan, I break your powers over the service, over the people. You cannot hinder them from receiving the words and the blessing of God. We bind every spirit of distraction, confusion, division, rebellion, rejection, false doctrine, false revelation, and every evil and wicked hindering spirit that would attempt to disrupt the service or interfere with the people from receiving from God. In the name of Jesus, I release you demon spirits from your assignments over us. Loose you in the outer darkness, never to return again in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I invite you in. You take over. I decrease for your increase. All of you, none of me. I step back so you may step forward. Manifest yourself as the teacher through myself, the yielded vessel. In Jesus' name, I pray that revelation knowledge flows freely, unhindered, undistracted, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Heavenly Father, I give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, and all the adoration for what you will be accomplishing and what you will be revealing through the teaching of your word in the name of Jesus. And the church said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. All right. Praise the Lord. Once again, the title of the message is, well, our theme is close relationship with God, close relationship with God. And we're teaching from the subject of the new life of the believer, the new life of the believer. Our foundation scripture will be John chapter three, verse one through seven, and Romans chapter 10, verse eight through 17. So let's go to our foundation scripture first. Once again, John chapter three. Then we're gonna start at verse one. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said to you, you must be born again. Focus on the word must, must, absolute necessity. Now let's go to our second foundation scripture, Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, let's drop down to verse eight. It says, but what says it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. 
that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to call, a rich to all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be, be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except for they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all but obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All righty now. The purpose for our message is to inform the believer that it is critical that they build an intimate relationship with their heavenly father. God already knows you, but he wants you to know him. Many people walk around and say, oh, I know the word, I know the word. Yeah, but do you know the author of the word? Our golden objective is that the believer would change their attitude of rejection to change. Because many times when it's time to change, people don't like change. They get comfortable in doing things the way they've been doing it. They get comfortable with tradition. But the goal and objective is the believer will change their attitude of rejection to change to a hunger and thirst of God's way of doing and living right. Amen. God has a way. Man has a way that he think is right, but it's not right. Let's uh, go to uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter, I believe it's 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs 16, 25, it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Death doesn't mean necessarily he's gonna drop dead. It doesn't eliminate that because you can make a mistake and do that. But death is an unwanted circumstance, an unwanted result, a negative result, because you're doing it your way. Because Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. So if it says in all your ways acknowledge him, that means we should be talking to him, God, on a regular basis. So from this regular communication with God, we're building relationship because we're communicating. We're getting to know his voice because we're talking to him in all our ways. Even simple things like going to the store. You get ready to go to the store, you make your list out. Who's got the best deals, Lord? God knows everything, right? He's everywhere all the time. So when you do that, he, you showing God that you're relying on him, okay? The things that you need and want, you may save half the money you was gonna spend if you just went to the same store that you always go to, amen? Now, in our introduction, we look at when God's plan of redemption for man came, Jesus actually died so that we could come back into relationship with God. That was the focus. He took away our sins because, see, when we walk in sin, we can't fellowship with God. We can't come before God with sin. Amen. That's why we got to confess our sins before we pray. We got to confess our sins before we come to God and ask. You can't be in the hotel with somebody that you're not supposed to be in, and then you want to pray when you get in the car. Amen. You got to be clean. So, therefore, Jesus died so that whatever we did, God would be able to forgive us. So therefore, if the plan of salvation was to bring us back in a relationship with God, we need to be communicating with God on a regular daily basis, okay? You don't want to hit and miss. You don't want to, it's just like when you watch those soap operas on TV, they always leave you at the end where you got to see it the next day. You got to see it the next day. Well, you got to look at God the same way that you got to talk to him the next day. You got to talk to him at night before you go to bed. Amen. After you get through praying, when you get up from praying, you should be different because you talk to God and you heard back from him. You don't just pray and then you go on off 
and you didn't give God a chance to say something. Amen? It's communication. Remember, the Bible says we're in, we're, we're co laborers with, with God. We don't do it for God. God don't do it for us. We work together in God's plan. It manifests. Amen? Now, salvation, the baptism of Holy Spirit, and water baptism are works that manifest your belief in God in the beginning of your Christian walk. Because if you didn't believe it, you wouldn't have did it. Amen? So this whole thing, even this relationship with God, is still a faith walk. Why? Because you're believing in God that you can't see, but you can see what he has done. And that gives you a revelation that's real. I like to say this part too, when a person gives their life to Christ, that's one thing. But then when you get receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you speak in other tongues, you know you couldn't speak in other tongues before you got saved. When you speak in other tongues, that was a supernatural act. That's a revelation right there that what's in this book is for real. Amen. That should encourage you to keep on going, keep on going, keep on seeking the word, okay? Because when people ask you, why are you doing this? Well, this is what the word say. See, that's why God's word don't change. Just think if the word changed every year. We'd be arguing all the time. Oh, that's what he said last year. Last year he changed it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. We'd be constantly arguing. Jesus says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, his word don't change. But the ignorant man in the pulpit would change the word. That's why you have to be filled with the Spirit. So Holy Spirit can minister to you so you have discernment. That's why he gave us tongues. The Bible says, he that speaketh in unknown tongues edifies himself. You build yourself up. You become more spiritually stronger, more spiritually sensitive to God leading and guiding you. When you feel with the Spirit and you've been praying in the Spirit on a regular basis, when people are talking about God and you hear something wrong, you recognize the Holy Spirit is like an alarm goes off. Something that would just say it is wrong. You get that, dee, 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 dee. it's in your spirit. You get that unction, that's wrong. And you have to show them where it is in the Word. Because some people just repeat what they heard others say about God, but they have no scriptural foundation. I remember I was talking to this lady. She belonged to a Catholic church. And uh, I asked her, I said, why do you guys teach the people to talk to Mary? And she gave me an example. She said, well, you know, when people come to me about my kids, they tell me about my kids because they're mine. I said, yeah. She said, well, we tell Mary what to tell Jesus. And I'd say, oh, that's interesting. You know, I knew it was wrong, but you know, I didn't jump on her right away. I asked her, I say, that's interesting. I said, what chapter and verse is that in? And she said, I don't know, but it's in there. See what I'm saying? So she was going by what somebody else had said. You know, and I told her, I said, I said next time you go to church, this is what you do. Talk to the priest. And tell him to show you where it is. And if I come back by here, because I met her when I was at work in one of my work areas. And I said, when I come back by, let me know where it's at, because I want to look that up. She said, okay. But I hadn't seen it since. <laughs> Amen. But that's what the people say. So you have to confirm the word. Whenever somebody talk to you about God, ask them what chapter and verse is that in. Especially if you ain't heard it, because we don't know everything. You know, we know a lot because we go to a word church, but still we don't know everything. So you have to get confirmation when somebody talking to, about, talking to you about your God and you know it's wrong or you have some inkling in your spirit that, I don't know about that, I'm not sure about that. Look it up yourself, okay? Now, you must get to know God and become closer to him because one, your life is hid in Christ. Colossians 3.3 3 says your life is hid in Christ. Well, if your life is hid in Christ, who you need to be hanging out with? Christ, amen. Well, we can't physically hang out with him, but spiritually we got the word. So when you're hanging out in this Bible, you're hanging out with God because God is inseparable from his word, amen. Secondly, God has all the answers and all the solutions to every concern known to man. So if he got all the answers and all the solutions, who else we need to be talking to on a regular basis? God, because we know the devil is trying to kill us every day. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill, steal, and destroy. That's his motive. He wants to deceive you. And he's very clever because he will use the scripture sometimes to deceive you. Because he tries to sugarcoat the lies that he tells you. And that's called deception because inside all deception, there's truth because it's the truth that gives the deception the power to deceive. 
he mixes it in, just like he did Eve. He told Eve, did God say you would surely die? I said, yeah, he said we would die. And he said, oh no, you won't surely die. You're gonna be like God's knowing good and evil. So he, focused, he made her focused on the positive and forget about the disobedience to what God said. And then as a result of that, that's why we're here now. We had to be born again, amen? Now, back on our foundation scripture in John chapter three, go back to John chapter three. And I'll drop down to verse seven, I believe it is, seven. John three, verse seven. Yeah, Jesus said, moreover not that I said to you, you must be born again. When you look up the word must, it's Greek word, number 1525 for those who uh, have the concordance, means that must, it means to come into, means to go in through. In other words, when he said you must be born again, it's an absolute necessity that you start out this way. That's what he's telling you. You must be born again. This is how you go into it, okay? He said uh, in, uh, let me see, verse three, if you look at verse three, Jesus answered and said to him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the, the kingdom of God. Translation, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, that's the start of your relationship. So your relationship starts with the new birth even though you don't know God, but that's how you start. You must be born again, because other than that, you can't come to God because you are a sinner. And a sinner is not a sinner because he commits a sin. A sinner is a sinner because he's not born again, because you, when you were born out of your mother's womb, you were born separated from God. Jesus, well, God's plan of salvation was to get you back into fellowship with God. That's why 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness you don't hang out with the devil's kids holy spirit trying to lead and guide you the devil is misleading and misguiding them and if you're not strong enough in the word their unholy influence will have more influence on you than your positive influence on them you know it doesn't mean that we don't say anything to the unbelievers because those are the lost that we're supposed to be reaching for God because we've all been called to the ministry of reconciliation, amen? So we're reaching out to the lost, but you don't hang out with them. You don't go on events. You don't eat with them. Say, we're going to dinner and you know they're not there yet, okay? You're doing it because God said it, okay? You're not being mean, you're doing it because it's God's way. It's God's way, not your way, remember? If you call yourself giving your life to Christ, then you're saying that Jesus is, we know he's the savior, but if he's your Lord, you're saying that I'm going to do it his way. That's why Jesus said, why you call me Lord and you don't do what I asked you. Amen. Now, he ain't going to make you, but he did ask you. And we want to be obedient, right? Amen. All right. Now, in our second foundation scripture, Romans, turn to Romans again. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. It all starts with us believing. Romans 8, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 10, I'm sorry. Not Romans 8, Romans 10, Romans 10. Romans 10, focus on the word, let me see where I want to. Let's say verse 15. No, for 14. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except he be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So focus on the word believe, uh, Greek word 4100 in your concordance. It means commit to trust. 
So who has committed to trust in God's word? It means to put in trust with. In other words, you become fully persuaded that this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and I'm going to live by this word. Everybody, every believer has to soon make up in their mind, I'm going to believe God. Because see, God, what he God does, he allows you to get in situations so that you can see that you need God. Amen. And he's not doing it to be mean. This is how he grows you. The Bible tells us that those that live godly shall suffer persecution. So persecution is not a bad thing. If you're being persecuted, that's a sign to you, I'm doing the right thing. I'm living right. Because if you ain't living right, the devil wouldn't be messing with you. If he already had you twisted, he wouldn't even be messing with you. Because well, I got him already. I can leave him alone. I got him going off the, off the mark. Amen. All right. Now, let's get into our, our first main point. We're going to look at some of the benefits of a close relationship with God. Now, let's look at Psalms. Turn to Psalms 37, 23, and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Psalms 37, 23, and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Now, the first benefit of a close relationship with God, you begin your faith walk by hearing from God to receive instructions. In Psalms, it tells us the steps of a good man are ordered by who? But if you're not talking to him, who's going to order your steps? Amen. You're out there doing it yourself because you're too far away from God. See, God has all the answers, but if you're not hearing the answers from God, it means you're too far away from him. The relationship is not there. So that's what he wants. He knows you already, but he wants you to know him because it's a good thing that you know him when nothing, when we don't have a pandemic, amen, so that when we do have a pandemic, you can still get your instructions because you know him. You know him, amen. In Proverbs 3, 5, 6, I always say you got to employ that in your life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Because see, you can, you can almost always have good ideas. But he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. So therefore, before you make the actual step, ask God, is this right? Am I doing this right? Because he may, he may want to put some icing on the cake to bring it to pass, amen. All right, second benefit, you begin building spiritual strength through consistent communication with God. First Corinthians 14, two and four, verse two says, he that speaketh in an own tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. No man understandeth him, but in the spirit he speaketh what? Mysteries, mysteries are simply divine secrets. Verse 4 says, he that speaketh an unknown tongue edifies himself. You build yourself up. You become more spiritually stronger. You become more spiritually sensitive to God leading and guiding you. That's why he gave you those tongues. See, the second benefit of tongues is you don't know what you're saying, so you can't mess it up. Secondly, the devil can't interfere because he don't know what you're saying. Okay? So you, that keeps you on top. You got a direct line to God. And then after you have a prayer session with God praying in the spirit, then you shut up and be quiet. Father, if you have anything to say, I, your servant, ready to receive. And just be quiet. And always have a notepad somewhere. Notepad. I got a notepad in my truck at work. I can be driving and Lord say something. When I get ready to stop, and I'm, I'm writing. I tear that off, put it in my pocket, take it home, take it to my office. I have a notepad in the bathroom. Be ready to receive from God. Because see, God, he waits because he know you be busy sometimes. You know, we all be busy doing our thing. But God waits sometimes to that quiet moment that he drops something in. So be ready. Because you can't remember everything. Okay? That's how you bust a blood vessel trying to remember everything and not writing down. And you go to the store. Something I was supposed to get. Something. Write it down. The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. So he that readeth it can run with it. But if you don't write nothing down, what you going to run with? Amen. In Jude 20, it says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The highest form of prayer, praying in the Spirit. 
you talking to God, you're getting more sensitive, more sensitive so that when he does lead and guide you, when difficult things are happening, you recognize the answer. You want to recognize the answer when nothing's going on so that when we got this pandemic or any other thing that's hectic that's happening in your life, you recognize, okay, I got the answer. I got the answer. Because see, if God is everywhere all the time and he knows everything, he already know you was going to get in trouble before you got in trouble. And he's already got the answer. I, I like to read that one because that sings home. Go to 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's another one that you have to employ in your life. This right here, 1 Corinthians 10, drop down to verse 13. This here should give you peace and comfort when you're going through whatever. If you don't jump to conclusion, the Bible says through faith and patience, you're inherited the promise. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with, that's the key, with the temptation, also may wake it, may, will make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. If God allow you to go through it, he know you can handle it. You know why? Because he said, I got the answer. I'm going to shoot the answer right down to you in a minute. But see, he let you go through that because he's growing you. He's growing you. So problems is not always something negative. It's growing you so that you can help yourself the next time a similar situation comes. And secondly, you can help others. Because see, we're in the people development business. It ain't just for us. We ain't getting all this word just for us. It's to take to the lost, okay? We were lost, somebody brought it to us. There's some lost out there, we'd take it to them, amen? Okay, third benefit. You begin to see things through guys, God's eyes, recognizing that people that are lost need someone to tell them about Jesus. That's where we come in, amen? That's our ministry, everybody's ministry, every believer's ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. So you start with your family, start with your neighbors, in your block, people at work, people that you see when you go to the store. People when you see when you go on vacation, when you go out of town, okay? We got a whole world out there. The Bible says the harvest is plenty, but the labor's are few. The labor's are few, okay? Anybody want to be a laborer for the Lord? Amen, amen. He'll send them, just, just, just tell. A lot of times I go fishing. I say, Father, I'm going to go fishing. I say, if anybody out there needs to know about Jesus, I send them to me. Send them across my path. Send me across their path. Okay, do the same thing when you're getting ready to go to the store. He'll send them to you because God knows who's looking for Jesus. The Bible tells us that the world is looking for the sons of God. Okay, how many people walk past us? They don't realize they just walk past Jesus when they walk past you. Amen. Because you're God's representative in the earth realm. Okay, but you got to have that relationship so you recognize when he tells you, minister to that person. Go talk to that person. Amen. Okay, fourth benefit, your faith is strengthened from your relationship with God. Your belief, your trust, and confidence increases to a higher level. And when that ha happens, it eliminates fear and doubt. Because fear and doubt, you're going to do without. So you got to eliminate fear and doubt. So the closer you get to God, the less you will fear when challenges occur. The less you will doubt when God tell you to do something. Because when you know he telling you to do it, you know he got your best interest at hand. You'll go ahead and do it. Because he's got to grow you even in that area. When he tell you to give money, when he tell you to give up your car, when he tell you to give that brother your suit. Okay, he's building you into a higher level of trust and confidence that he'll do what he says, okay? He already has told us those that live godly shall suffer persecution. But when you're persecuted, don't run, don't doubt, don't think God is not there, amen? 
He's right there with you. Did Jesus tell us not? Didn't he tell us that he would never leave us, never forsake us? Amen. Well, he's right there with us. See, the more you tune into that, you recognize, okay, you just, instead of running, you say, okay, God, how you want to handle this? You might get an unfriendly letter in the mail. Okay, Holy Spirit, how do we work this out? Instead of saying, oh, man. See, when you say, oh, man, you just in excluded God out of the equation because you said, oh, man, you didn't gave up, forgot about God was right there with you. He saw you when you opened it and read it. So it's like, okay, God, how you want to handle this? What you want to do with this? I had a, a piece of property I bought and uh, I had got behind on the mortgage. And uh, a mortgage man called me up. He said, uh, Mr. Alexander, I um, need you to make this payment. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it Friday. He said, uh, uh, I'm not gonna be able to wait that long for it. I need you to make this payment now. Cause see, I was actually behind a couple months and I caught up with one month and that, that Friday was gonna come and I was gonna catch up and I'd be on point. And he said, uh, Mr. Alexander, I helped this first payment for you. Uh, you think I'm gonna hold the second payment? I said, well, I told you I'm gonna make it Friday. He said, I'm not, not gonna be at rate. He said, uh, I tell you what, you just get ready to pack. And I said, well, I believe it's paid already. He said, what you say? I said, I believe it's paid already in Jesus' name. He said, I tell you what, Mr. Alexander, you just start packing. And I hung up on him, okay? And I went to the Father, I said, Father, I stood on your word, so I thank you. I believe I have it in Jesus' name. And that Friday came, and I made the payment. And the next month was coming up, and I was getting ready to be behind on that one. And uh, that man called me. He said, Mr. Alexander, we need you to make that next payment. And uh, he said, uh, as I told you, I'm going to make it uh, next Friday. He said, okay, then that'll, be, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. You know what I'm See, you, you put God, God to the test. He's faithful. He's sovereign. He'll do what he says, but he needs you to trust and believe, okay? And that comes even better when you know him, amen, when you know him. <clears throat> so your belief, trust, and confidence increases to a higher level because your faith is strengthened, which eliminates fear and doubt. Okay, next one. Time is no longer a factor when you know God. Time is no longer a factor. Let's turn to James. Turn to James chapter 1. See, if you let time mess with you, then that's when fear comes in. James chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience but let patience have her what kind of work perfect work so that means if you rush it it'll be imperfect and you'll mess up okay that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing so in other words God said as long as you do it through faith and patience you will inherit the promise in in the Hebrews 11 1 it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. So in other words, God is telling me if I use faith, then I got it automatically because it's the substance of the things that I'm hoping for. It's the evidence of the things that I don't see that I won't need and desire, that I prayed for. I don't have it, so I'm asking and believing God by faith that I have it. So therefore, if I use faith, God said I automatically got it because it's the substance and the evidence of the things I hope Amen. So if I do it God's way, I got it. It's when we go away from God. That's why he says in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Because you're showing him that you trust him, that you believe in him and you have confidence in him. Because see, if, you've, if you have, well, belief is, uh, I mean, faith is belief, trust and confidence and what God says in his word will come to pass that you do what it says. When you get at that level, now you, you ignite expectation. And after expectation, it's manifestation. But you gotta get there. I gotta believe in God. I gotta trust in what I believe. I have confidence in what I'm trusting, which is what I'm believing. 
and then I have expectation. So I'm expecting God to come through because he said that his word would never return void. It would always accomplish that when he pleased. I always prosper in the thing where he sent it. So now I'm waiting for manifestation. But before manifestation, my expectors have to be on high. I have to expect God to show up because if he did it before, he'll do it again. See, God is not committed to your situation. He's committed to his word. That's why you got to give him his word. That's why you got to know his word. That's why you got to know him. Okay, next one. You look forward to spending quality time with God throughout the day. You, once again, Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways acknowledge him, he'll direct your path. You got to get that praise and worship in, amen. He inhabits the praises of his people, amen. That song by Terry McAlman, that's a, a I was going to say, that's a, that's an atmospheric change. That song will change the atmosphere, amen. You are great. See, the, be the best songs to sing to God is the, the songs that talk to him. Now, there's some good songs that talk about him, but if God is here and he's real, why not we sing to him? So pick you some praise and worship songs that sing to him. So when you're in your car, you're singing to him, not about him. We know he's good, but let's sing to him because he said he inhabits the praises of his people. So let's sing to him, amen. All right. You now, okay, next one. You know God always has the answer to whatever difficulty you get into. We already went over that first Corinthians ten thirteen. Uh turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter eleven. Hebrews eleven. Hebrews eleven. Verse 6, it says, but without faith, once again, without you believing, trusting, and having confidence in what God says in his word will come to pass, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must first believe that he is. You got to believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligent, you're doing it on a regular basis. You're doing it all the time. So when you're doing it all the time, we're building relationships. We're building relationship because we're doing it all the time, diligently, on a regular basis. Even the days you don't come to church, you're still getting up and having church. Amen. Whether you're sick or whether you're not feeling it, you still you get you some TV episodes. You got your cell phone, you can get some episodes. Every believer should minister, should listen to two to three hours of the word. You got to feed yourself on a regular basis and you got to do it daily. Why? Because you're in the world daily and the world is feeding you its deception. So therefore we got to feed the truth in there. So when the deception comes at us, we can offset it with the truth because we know God and we know his word. Amen. And we know he will bring it to pass. Okay. Now, our next point. Sometimes the storm was allowed or created for the relationship. Because see, God, he knows the areas that he need to grow you in. So he allows certain things so he can bring it to pass. So he can grow you up in this area, grow you up in that area, amen? Because in 1 Corinthians 13, he's not going to let you go through nothing that you can't handle without bringing it to pass, without bringing the answer. Why? Because he don't want you to blow a fuse. He don't want you to give up and quit, okay? But you have to grow from this point to the next point, from glory to glory, amen? Uh, write down 2 Timothy 3.12 and John 15, 1 through 5. You got to remember, your life is hid in Christ. That's Colossians 3, 1 through 3. Now, let's, uh, as we get ready to close, turn to Genesis 18. Well, go to Philippians 3 while, we, while we're back there. New Testament, Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Philippians 3.10, Paul said, that I might know him 
and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable to his death. Paul said that he might know him. Verse seven, if you go up to verse seven, he says, but what things were gained in me, those I counted lost for Christ. In other words, everything that you accomplish, you count it lost for the in exchange for the relationship. Amen. Because if you got the relationship, you got everything that you want, need, and desire anyway. Because he said he would never see the righteous forsaken. Amen. He would never see his seed begging bread. So when you know him, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to stress out because you know God got you. Amen. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Drop down to verse 17. We're talking about Abraham and his relationship with God. Verse 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I what? I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. He said, I know him. He said, this is my boy, this is my partner. Shall I hide this thing? Because they had a relationship and that's what he wants with you, a relationship, amen? Alrighty. In summary, God knows you, but he wants you to know him from glory to glory. You may know the word of God, but do you know the author of the word? God will put you in different places so that you can know him in different ways. We read Hebrews eleven six. 6, so write that down again. But this is what I want you to remember. Let this sink in. God doesn't live in a box. So don't try to put him in one. Amen. Okay, quick review. We talked about the benefits of a close relationship with God. We said that you begin your faith walk by hearing from God to receive instructions. Psalm 37, 23 and Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Secondly, you begin building spiritual strength through consistent communication with God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2, 4, and Jude 20. Thirdly, you begin to see things through God's eyes, recognizing that the people that are lost need someone to tell them about Jesus. You begin seeing the world like God sees it. Amen. Fourth, your faith is strengthened from your relationship with God. Your belief, your trust, and your confidence increases at a higher level which eliminates fear and doubt. Because fear and doubt will keep you from doing what God say do. And then you'll be saying, something told me to do it. I knew I should have did it. God's trying to keep you from stop saying something told me. That's Holy Spirit knocking at your heart. But the reason why you don't commit to it, because you're still too far away from God. You gotta get closer and closer, amen? And the fifth one, Time is no longer a factor when you have that close relationship with God. Amen. If he said he'll do it, you stand on it. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians, when you've done all the stand, what do you do? Stand. Amen. Six, you look forward to spending quality time with God throughout the day. Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways acknowledge him, he'll direct your path. He inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. And seven, you know God always has the answer to whatever difficulty you get into. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 and Hebrews eleven six. 6. And we talked about sometimes the storm was allowed or created for the relationship to let you know God got your back. But most of all, he wants you to know that you need God. You need God. What did Jesus say? You're the branch, I'm the vine. 
Without me, you can do what? Nothing. We can't do it without God. In this relationship factor, if you're a believer. Now, if you're, if you're an unbeliever, then you'll try to do it yourself. You'll try to do it yourself. And God will sit back and let you because some believers try to do it themselves. And we understand we all have been there as we're growing to the next level and the next level. We'll try to do it ourselves at first. And then we'll come to the conclusion where the Bible says, cast your cares to the Father because he cares for you. You know, you're trying to get that unsaved loved one, relative, trying to get them to go to church. You just got to stop helping them and give them to the Lord. And don't take them back once you give them to them. Amen. A lot of times we do that. Father, I cast them up to you. And then you keep on trying it again. You done took them back from the Lord. Give them to God and let them have them. He's got a way. He know how to reach them. Okay, just pray. For, <clears throat> excuse me. Just pray that, uh, hey. Pray that God send laborers into his harvest so they will receive the word of God. Amen. <clears throat> Water break, water break. Amen. <clears throat> and finally, we talked about Genesis 18 and uh, Philippians 3.10. Uh, God says, should I hide this thing from Abraham because I know him? Now God knows you. Do you know him? And Paul said in Philippians 3.10 that I might know him. He count everything he gained lost in exchange for the relationship. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. That's all I have today. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Okay. I want to thank you. Thank the internet broadcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. But I want to make sure that you understand everything starts like we talked about earlier. Everything starts with Jesus. So I'm not going to take for granted that everybody's saved. So I want you, internet audience, to repeat this prayer out loud. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I would call upon the name of Jesus, you would not cast me out, but you would take me in, and I thank you for it. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and he died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification and I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word, that if I would ask for Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. So I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside me. Lead me. Guide me. Anoint me. Empower me. And direct my life so I may live for God. Reveal to me God's plan and purpose for my life here on earth. Thank you, Father for saving me and for filling me with Holy Spirit and for revealing to me your plan for my life by faith on earth in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe you got born again according to the word. Now, we want you to call the number on the bottom of the screen, 314-867-1894, and let us know, and we'll be able to answer any question that you have, okay? So I want you to do this for me, be blessed, keep God first in your life, and we'll see you on the next broadcast of Grow to Go Christian Center. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And I'll see you the next time. Amen. Love you.